When Humphrey Bogart was attending the prestigious prep school, Phillips Academy Andover, he was expelled for drinking and smoking. And while it's likely the school regretted not being able to call the future star a graduate, they at least tried to stop him from giving in to unhealthy vices. Sadly, Bogart fell victim to the addiction, dangers, and cancers that can come from a lifetime of smoking. And that's what ultimately killed him. Join Facts First as we look at how Humphrey Bogart smoked in every scene, but it came back to haunt him. Bogart was born December 25, 1899. His parents were wealthy, she was an heiress and commercial illustrator while he was a surgeon, but their marriage was tumultuous and fairly terrible. Bogart still grew up in luxury, living in a fancy apartment in Manhattan. After his brief stint at Andover, where he was expelled for drinking and smoking, Bogart decided he'd give the Navy a try. In later years, he was known for having a prominent scar on his lip. Bogart claimed it was from an incident during his time serving his country. He reportedly was walking a prisoner of the Navy somewhere when the prisoner asked for a cigarette. Bogart looked around for a match, and while his eyes were averted, the prisoner tried to escape by hitting him across the mouth and running. And perhaps this incident that changed his life at least a little was foreshadowing his later death that resulted after years of smoking. Early Career after his time in the Navy, Bogart began seeking out parts on Broadway, which he was able to secure by age 21. But they weren't particularly big parts, and Bogart wasn't finding a lot of success. Eventually, he made his way to Hollywood to try his luck there. It took a few years, but by 1935, he was a bona fide star. By then, he was showing up in up to 10 movies every year. Bogart was married a few times over the course of his life, and his first prominent marriage was to actress Mayo Metho. It was during this unhappy marriage that Bogart likely increased his drinking and smoking habits even more than previously. Metho was an alcoholic herself with a fiery temper. She would rightfully accuse him of cheating on her, and when she would get mad, she'd take drastic measures. She threw kitchen objects at Bogart, stabbed him, and even set the house on fire. She also tried to take her own life by slitting her wrists. Bogart's reaction to all of this behavior was to double down on his own vices, so drinking and cigarettes quickly became a more and more prominent component of his life. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like, and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Alcohol and Cigarettes Bogart may have had a flourishing career and fairly decent health in the first half of the 20th century, but his lifestyle of excess quickly added up and came back to haunt him. By the beginning of the 50s, Bogart was reportedly in failing health despite only being in his 50s. He generally smoked two packs of cigarettes every day. One clear sign of this was that he was constantly coughing. He'd quickly get out of breath at even basic movements. And it wasn't just his smoking that hurt him. He'd been drinking so much and for so long, his liver had begun to deteriorate. This made him tired constantly. His brain had been damaged and caused him to have memory loss. Bogart was also stubborn. He kept putting off a trip to the doctors until 1956, long after his symptoms had been apparent. When he finally did, the prognosis was dire. Bogart had developed esophageal cancer, most likely due to his years of drinking and smoking. Doctors tried to save his life. In March of 1956, Bogart's doctors set out to try to save his life. By then, his esophagus had become cancerous. They removed it all. They found that two of his lymph nodes were cancerous as well, as was a rib, so they removed those two. It was a grueling nine-hour surgery. After the surgery, he received rounds of chemotherapy, but sadly that didn't help. Doctors tried another surgery after that, with little to no effect. By that point, it was 1957, and Bogart was a shell of a man. He couldn't eat nor talk. He'd shriveled to only 80 pounds and was basically either coughing or gasping for breath at every moment, despite the oxygen tank he had strapped to him. Amazingly, even this horrible health situation didn't deter him from smoking cigarettes. He merely switched to filtered cigarettes, instead of the Chesterfields he smoked for most of his life. On January 14, 1957, Bogart went into a coma. He died the following day. Lifestyle and Cancer Esophageal cancer is a nasty disease, and a lifestyle of smoking, drinking, and even consuming a lot of red meat is known to be linked directly to it. Bogart was known to eat a lot of red meat, as well as other processed meats, every day. And his two-pack-a-day smoking habit and years of heavy drinking likely were large contributors to his cancer. In addition to his esophagus, he had cancerous cells in his throat and voice box. 
These are usually caused by years of smoking. They can also be caused by HPV, a sexually transmitted disease. While it's not known if Bogart had HPV, he was known to be very sexually active, so it's a possibility as well. Regardless, his lifestyle played a huge part in his rapidly deteriorating health by the time the 50s rolled around. Why Bogart Smoked So Much On Camera Humphrey Bogart was seen smoking cigarettes on camera so often, he became basically linked with smoking in the eyes of audiences, critics, and studios. In fact, a slang term for cigarettes was coined, bogies, simply because of how iconic a smoker he was. Of course, at the beginning of his career, during the 1930s, smoking was incredibly commonplace, on and off the screen. One big reason Bogart and other actors of that time used a cigarette as a prop was because many screenplays didn't have stage directions in them, or at least they had a tendency to have long monologues for the characters without any action in the middle. Actors found it hard to keep audiences engaged for that long, so they'd include a cigarette in their performance to have action they could use in the middle. That way the monologues would feel broken up nicely and were more easily digested. The action of pulling out, lighting, and taking a drag of a cigarette as a character talked would ensure the audience not only didn't get bored, but that they kept focusing on the mouth of the person talking. Bogart reportedly utilized this method during a long monologue of an early film he was in. Before that, he had voiced his frustration to the director that the scene was intensely boring. He remarked that the only way to keep it interesting would be to have two camels fornicating in the background. Of course, the director wasn't about to try that, so he instead suggested to Bogart he try smoking in the scene instead. Bogart's Image because of the success of this method of acting, Bogart continued smoking during his movies, and another of his beliefs was that he didn't have to stray too far from the types of characters that had made him famous. So while some actors are always looking to branch out and not be typecast, Bogart didn't feel a need for that. His most successful characters to that point had been guys who were tough but somehow detached. As such, he never saw the need to stop playing this type. And since cigarette smoking went hand in hand with his acting choices when playing them, he continued to smoke in every film. It's been said his cigarettes were almost like a replacement for his characters carrying a gun. And his attitude of sitting back and smoking rather than engaging in the world gave his performances a laid back level of cool that audiences loved. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Bogart ultimately regretted smoking so much? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Factsverse as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Factsverse, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So, if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the Join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members-only videos waiting for you, with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click Join, and we'll see you inside the Membership tab.